Well, this got uh, started back in 1949 uh, when they hired Captain Thomas Jefferson Lee of the U.S. Corps of Topographical Engineers uh, to come up here and establish a starting point for the state line. I mean, Iowa had become a state back in 1846. Here it is, 1849. They still don't know in the field where the actual border is. And the surveyors have been working their way up this direction. So they're about six miles south of the line with the townships already, but they can't do the next township because this, they don't know where the state line is. So Lee came out here with an instrument that he felt was actually inferior for what he was doing, but it was the only one available from the office at the time. He got out here late in the fall, and he set up over in Wisconsin. This is Lee's, a portion of Lee's map that he drew up of the river bottom here and, and his work. The Wisconsin side had already been subdivided into townships and sections, so they knew approximately where the parallel of 4330 would be. So he came up the river and he picked a point which was a good spot to set up where he could see Polaris and, and take his star observations on the Wisconsin side. He sat there and he took over 300 shots on Polaris at its elongation points and another 100 shots on a southern star so that he could average them out. They usually did both of some stars in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere because there's a refraction that occurs when the light comes through the atmosphere and by sighting stars from both directions that kind of compensated for the refraction. In fact that was one of Talcott's points when he came up with his method for doing it. Uh, so he did those observations, calculated where 4330 was, measured north over here on the West, east side of the river, set a point which fell near Tippett's cabin, actually there was a cabin there right next to, in a landing called Bad Axe Landing that the point fell very close to on the river bank on the Wisconsin side. He went across the river, turned an angle, went across the river and set a birch post, about a 12 foot tall birch post on the river bank on the other side, but he realized all this in here was floodplain and that this point wasn't going to last and it wasn't a good place to put a permanent permanent monument. So he came back on the ridge here where he could see, had a clear view looking across the floodplain, turned off an angle and ran a line across the floodplain here to the bank on this side, on the Iowa side, which is about three and a half miles away. Uh, he then came over here and he measured up and he had to jog one time to measure. Measured up uh, to be on the parallel of 4330 and he set this monument which is still there today. Uh, it's been kept up by the city of New Albany here so it's been repainted and uh, been repainted and uh, things established around it a couple different times to protect it. But this monument is still here today that he had made. And uh, he had it made at a cost of $57. It was made down in Lansing on October 18th, 1849. And then they brought it up here on a boat from Lansing, hauled it over here and, and set it in place to mark the point here. When Lee finished his work, he went back to Washington, drew up these maps, and he actually did a calculation of what he thought his accuracy was. Based on the instrument he had and the average of all his sights and the fact he had to project it across the river and then measure up to set the point, oh, he added all those factors and he said, I'm confident I'm within two seconds of arc of being in the correct location. And and he'd even calculated that one second of arc here was just about exactly 101 feet. So his calculated accuracy for the point was 202 feet. That's what he said. I'm within 202 feet. I'm confident I'm within 202 feet. And in fact, if we check it today, that's about where it is. It's about within 200 feet of being on the exact parallel. But the monument controls, obviously, in the 
whole surveying system that they had adopted back then. When they set the original monuments, as long as there isn't any proof of fraud or a huge blunder, the monuments control. So that was the establishing the first monument here. And then it sat there for about a year or two, and uh, nothing really happened as far as getting here. There are several reasons for that. Uh, one of the first major ones is, as you go west along this line, the, the first part of it along the river here is in the what was called the neutral zone, which was already ceded by the Indians. Uh, so they we already had rights to settle in, in the corner of it here. Uh, but all the rest of the way across the state here was still sued Sioux territory, and they didn't have a treaty with them yet ceding any of this land for settlement. So while the surveyors maybe could have went out here ahead of that and started surveying, uh, typically and they'd like to make sure that they're not going to be bothered by the natives, uh, which had happened in a few cases. Um, so they were waiting for that treaty to be signed, which was finally it's the Treaty of Traverse de Sioux that was signed over in uh, St. Peter area uh, with the Indians that then gave them the rights to the whole southeastern part of Minnesota. Uh, and after that treaty in 1851, then there was more pressure by the settlers moving in here. And by that time, uh, Minnesota had become a territory and the territorial governor was writing and saying, we got people moving in here, we need to know where their uh, tracts of land are, we need to get the surveyors up here. So. Talcott was hired uh, as the surveyor in charge to come out here and, and set this up. And he started then from Lee's Monument. His instructions were to hold Lee's Monument. And then about every 40 miles, he was to establish additional observations as he went across the state here at additional astronomic stations, he called them, where he would set up and do his additional star shots confirm where the parallel of 4330 was. The surveyors then ran a straight line uh, using a high-powered transit. They'd project a straight line from station to station. They would then calculate how far off that line was at each point from the actual parallel, which is a curved line here. If you're running a parallel of latitude, that's a curved line. It's not straight. It curves with a curvature of the Earth. So from that straight line, they set initial points. They set initial temporary points every half mile. And then Talcott would calculate from that line how far off the curve would be, and the surveyors would backtrack and offset those points to set points on the line every half mile. They were setting township corners every six miles, and they were setting section corners and, and quarter corner posts every half mile on the line. And so that was the beginning and became a new baseline, really, for the surveys in Minnesota because they basically started over with this line running and creating townships from, from this baseline. This baseline started clear down in Arkansas. In fact, the township numbering here is the first township in Minnesota is 101, and you're probably thinking, oh, they must have had that planned. Well, they didn't. That's strictly by chance that it came out to be township 101 here. The townships in Iowa are actually about one mile short because they were closing on that parallel of 4330. But this thing had come up 100 townships already, which means it's 600 miles they've been surveying off of that one, from that one point and measuring. They decided they needed to start over. They should probably start over now and get an accurate baseline to do Minnesota and the Dakotas. So this became the second baseline for surveying all the townships and sections west of the Mississippi in Minnesota and clear out into the Dakotas. It goes all the way to the Missouri River uh, in South Dakota and North Dakota. It goes all the way across the state. It's all still referenced to this baseline. Now to get started, Lee set this point monument here on the parallel latitude, 4330. But in order to tie it to directions on that baseline for township numbering purposes, they needed an east-west position also. To do that, they were supposed to go down to the nearest township, which was about six miles south, the township corners that had already been set down here for a ways. They were supposed to go down to the nearest township corner and run a line due north and intersect it with the parallel 
And then they'd know exactly what township east and west they were at. Now, when they got here, they were supposed to do it between township three and four. When they got here, the river was so high, they couldn't measure out in there. They said they would have to be surveying from a boat in order to do it. So they decided in the field now, between James Marsh and Isaac Smith, they decided, well, we'll move over to the next township corner and we'll project that one up between four and five. So they went down along the Iowa River here, found the township corner that was there, ran that line up north to intersect the line from here to create what's called our initial point for the Minnesota-Dakota surveys.